everybody and welcome. Uh, today's word you find in the church Bibles on page uh, 1031. Uh, sorry, 1030. <laughs> it's from um, verse Luke 4, verse 16 to 24. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as he was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of the sight for the blind, and to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, and gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do hear in your hometown that we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he continued. No prophet is accepted in his hometown. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for Tim this morning, and we just thank you for the word that he has to bring to us. And I just pray that throughout him speaking to us, he may be aware that he is being guided by your Holy Spirit. And I just pray, Lord, for us that our hearts and minds would be open. Father, it's something we pray so much, but we really do ask that you would just open our hearts to receive what it is you want us to hear today. Amen. 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 Thank This morning I want to speak on speaking the truth in a noisy and distracted world. So first of all, I've got a question for you. How do you make a decision? How do you make a decision? Do you write a list of all the pros and cons of the, the decision that you're making and then decide, well, there's more pros, so that's a good thing, or there's more cons, so I'm not going to do that? Do you give yourself time to sp and space to think and reflect on what the decision might mean to you, your loved ones, your family, your friends? Do you seek guidance from those nearest and dearest to you? Well, it's often difficult, isn't it, in our world today to find time, space, peace and quiet to actually reflect and to make those decisions. After all, our world these days is full of noise. No matter where you go, there is noise. How often do you hear nothing but silence without specifically making that space for silence? It doesn't happen very often. In this day and age, our mobiles are pinging in our pockets. Uh, emails pop up on the computer screen. There's a draw to check Facebook. We share with each other these funny memes we see, and then before we know it, half an hour's gone, and we've achieved absolutely nothing. And Amanda and I are guilty of that one too. Even if we sit down and watch TV, we're bombarded with noise. I'm not talking about the program that we're watching, because often that can be interesting. But it's all the endless adverts. And Amanda and I were watching the Bake Off last week on All Four Catch Up, and we realized that when the adverts came on, the volume went up. And we had to actually mute the volume and unmute it when the program came back. And by the time it got to the third set of adverts in the Bake Off, I said to Amanda, well, the next one's going to be for KFC. Then we're going to have Burger King. Then we're going to have LSE. Then we're going to have Nike. Then we're going to have, and I can't remember what the fifth one was, and sure enough, five out of five, I got right. 
It's constant noise bombarding at us saying, this is what we need. We haven't got the right things. We need this stuff. We're living in a world where everything is 24-7. Even the shops are 24-7 now. The world is 24-7. It's fast-paced and it's noisy. And it's a world that's full of distraction. And clearly there's a need for many to escape. Fifteen years ago, I imagine how many people would say, well, I want to be off the grid. They probably would say it, but these days, when you say, I want to be off the grid, it means leaving your, I haven't got my phone in my pocket, actually, it means leaving your phone behind and switching off. And there's a real rise in that, that people want that time away, they need that space. We all need to escape. Now, I'm a big Marvel fan, I like the superhero movies, they're escapism. When it comes down to it, they're escapism. It's about ordinary people getting superpowers and doing extraordinary things. Now, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy them. But as you may have heard in the news, people are saying that this isn't cinema, it's getting tiring. And I think that's true for the world as a whole. The world itself is tiring. It's difficult sometimes to get up in the morning, to frame ourselves to go and get on with our day. And because of this noise and the distraction, it's really hard to make a decision anymore. I once heard a story about noise, and it goes like this. One day, a man was out walking his dog, trying desperately to decide which would be the right course to take concerning a life-changing decision when they came upon a turtle. They decided to stand there to see what the turtle would do. The turtle, on the other hand, would not move an inch one way or the other. Lost my place. They wouldn't move one way or another. It just sat there, flat on its stomach shell, with its head hanging out. The dog started to bark at it. And, just look, and the, the turtle looked back at the dog and continued to just sit there. The barking got louder, but the more the dog barked, the more the turtle seemed to hunker down and hide. Finally, the man decided he'd had enough, so he turned to leave. The turtle, too, got up and slowly moved on. And when all the commotion had finally died down, the man could make a decision. So can we apply this to when we're trying to listen to the voice of God? Are we struggling to hear the voice of God because of all the noise and all the distraction in the world. How often do we stop and listen to hear God speak to us? Do we create enough space in our lives to allow God to speak? Because the world's noise just keeps coming. That's not going to stop for us. We have to stop from it. And it's up to us to hear the words that Jesus is speaking. The words that he spoke from the prophet Isaiah. It's for us to stop and listen to the words of Jesus, the words of the prophet, the voice of God breathing. Because our, our gospel is not the fact that Jesus was there, but that Jesus is proclaiming a voice that cannot speak for itself. Jesus was proclaiming it then, and he's proclaiming it now. And we can go out and proclaim it too. To bring good news to the poor. To set the captives free. To release the oppressed. We cast our mind back to when Jesus, this would have happened in the synagogue that Jesus was reading in. Even the people there weren't listening to him. Because what do we get in the reading? There's murmurs. Well, isn't this Joseph's son? We knew him when he was a boy, and now he thinks of himself as a prophet. And then the noise began, and the barking grew louder. It became more intense. It began telling them that what Jesus was saying was false, that he was a liar, that the things of this world was truth. They wanted to cast Jesus down and destroy him. Because someone like him couldn't possibly understand their sufferings because he was different. He was from a privileged class. After all, he was a rabbi. There's all of these things going on as Jesus is speaking from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And it seems very relevant today. We know that the people then rise up and if we carry on in the reading, that they take one Jesus out of the town. So they don't hear these words the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, 
and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Very powerful words, probably very well known to most of us. So Jesus and Isaiah are urging us to look beyond all the noise in the world and see what's lurking beneath. We look beyond our everyday understanding and we look at the world with the eyes of Jesus rather than through our worldly eyes. And I don't think it's any coincidence that over the past few weeks here at Christchurch, while we've been praying before the service, it constantly is that, do you create silence? Is there space for me to actually speak? And as Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. How often in this world are we still? How often do we create that space of silence? I think God is really speaking to us. And I think he's speaking to the world. Do we look beneath the surface of what's going on and see what the Lord is saying? Of course, Jesus knows that the people he's speaking to, they aren't following him. They taunt him and go back at him rather than listening to what he's saying. Well, how often do we listen to Jesus and what he's saying to us and then go and do something completely different? How often do we actually act on Jesus' words to us? I think it was a few weeks ago I shared a little bit of my story when I first heard that call to ordination. I did a Jonah and ran in exactly the opposite direction. It's in the Bible that people run away when God says, I want you to do this. So don't feel guilty if that's you. So Jesus speaks from the scroll of Isaiah. He quotes a passage about the Messiah. Jesus is saying that he has come to bring God's love and mercy to those around him. He's challenged by those in the synagogue. This shows that when we present the gospel, it challenges everything that people know. The gospel is life transforming and it challenges all of our worldly assumptions because it brings God's grace into the equation. Something which the world does not seem to understand. The gospel message speaks into all those situations where it feels that hope has been lost. Well friends, no one has strayed too far for redemption. And I know you know that sat here today. It's the people out there. No matter how far away we walk from God, no matter how far, how much we do wrong, how much we keep going and going and going, there comes a point where we are never too far to turn around, to repent, and come back into the loving arms of our Savior. No one is too far lost for that. And my heart cries out for all those people who are lost over there, who we want to see in here. And I don't mean here in Christ, it should be great if people were here, but I mean in the church, not just in the church, bums on seat, but in the church with a living faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry. (laughs) So the reading is challenging us to think differently. It's challenging us to think differently to how the world wants us to think. If we think of that dog barking in the story, that's the world, that's the media. That's secularism. They want us to believe that they are in control because they refuse to believe that God is in control and they refuse to believe and acknowledge God. So we, as his disciples, have to take a different line. We listen to God and not the world because the world is trying to redefine truth. It's a skew, it, the truth in the world is a skewed notion of what many wished were right. But friends, you know, the world can't redefine truth because we know that truth is a person. Truth is Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we have a duty to speak truth to those around us. We have a calling to share the good news because people in our world need to hear the truth. The truth that will be countercultural to the world Truth that will shake people. Truth that will cause offense. Because we know that people are caught up in their own little worlds too much. We're probably guilty of it too. But people get caught up in their own little worlds. Their own little empires where everything is right. And for too long, people try to create good impressions to those around them. 
They try to find solace in things that just aren't right, that are not of God. People go along with what society says, well, that's a good life. Well, friends, it doesn't matter what the world thinks. It doesn't matter what people think of us. What matters is that we have our relationship with Jesus Christ. That we are in a right relationship with God. So the truth needs to be spoken to the world. Jesus Christ needs proclaiming in the world. Because we need to show the world that the answers that they're searching for are found in Jesus. They're not found in others' approval. They're not found in our addictions. They're not found in secularism. What people are missing is Jesus Christ as Lord of their life. We all know, gathered here, that it comes down to a decision. A decision of whether we're going to take that narrow path and follow the Lord, or are we going to take the wide path that the world says is the way to life. And we know we have to take that narrow path and follow the Lord. But to do that, we need to hear that still, small voice speaking to us. So I wonder, is that why there's so much noise and distraction in the world? Is it the enemy trying to drown out the voice of God for each and every one of us? Is it the enemy that's won people out there because there's so much noise and distraction, people can't hear God speaking anymore? Well, friends, it's time to take a stand It's time to make a noise, and it's time to make a noise that Jesus Christ is Lord of this land. We need to create a space for people to not be distracted by the world, to take time to ponder and reflect on what it means to follow Jesus. And like the turtle in the story I shared, the turtle needed the dog to stop barking before he could make a decision. So we need to drown out the noise of the world and bring the truth of Jesus Christ. I'm aware over the past few weeks we've ended up looking through some of this, haven't we, about speaking, about not being ashamed of the gospel, about sharing the gospel. And I think today it sort of summarizes everything that we've been doing because it said, Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And friends, that doesn't just apply to Jesus. That applies to each and every one of us gathered here. That the spirit of the Lord is upon us to do those things that Isaiah says. So in many ways, I see that reading as a commissioning for each and every one of us to do just that, to go and preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, to bring recovery of sight to the blind, and to release the oppressed. Jesus tells us to hear the words he speaks because they're words for our hearts. And we know that where our heart is, is where our value resides. Jesus is saying to just stop and be quiet and hear the true words of the prophets of old and stop looking at the words on the surface. The good news to the poor is not the poor in wealth, but it's the poor in spirit. Those who believe they have nothing because the world tells them that they're worth nothing. Their own sense of value matches what they hear. Jesus tells them to stop listening to the broken world. It can't offer anything original to set them free. Jesus says our value is not what determines it to be, but it's what's ordained by God as his messengers. Our story is not that which is contrived by what the media has told us. We must think or believe but it's what the Father has given us with a gift to tell. Freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight from the blind. It's prisoners of the world because they've let those of this world determine who they are, what future that they have for them. But we need to tell them that's not the truth. We need to tell them that the future is Jesus Christ. We need to let go and let God take charge. His way is what's written in the words of the Bible and his way has always been the best. His way is to stop and listen. Listen to what he's trying to tell you. And that message is the same as it was in Nazareth when Jesus spoke those words, when Isaiah penned those words. 
years and years ago. That message is the same yesterday, today and forever. Listen to the small voice. It's desperate to have a loud voice. And we can be that loud voice. As I say, in some ways it does sound contradictory that we need to move away from the noise of the world. But we need to move away from the noise of the world so that we can make a noise of our own. That mighty army of God rising up. We need to show the world what being a Christian is about. We need to show the world it's not just coming to church on a Sunday. We need to show the world that being a Christian is a 24-7 commitment. 365 days of the year. 366 in a leap year. You don't get a day off. We need to show the world what it means to live out the faith. To live out what we hear in church on a Sunday. We need to show the world Jesus Christ. Because we know that the way of the world leads to death. But the way of truth leads to life. And as we stand up and we make this noise in the world, we will face opposition. Jesus faced opposition when he presented the gospel. We will face opposition when we present the gospel. There's no easy way of saying that, but we will face it. But, there is a but. We will face opposition. But we know that the battle has already been won. We know that Jesus is already victorious, even over death. So we can go out with boldness. We, don't take things, we try not to take that opposition personally because we know it's the enemy trying to stop us doing God's work. At this time of year, of course, there's plenty of opportunity to speak light into the darkness. As we know, on Thursday, the world goes mad and celebrates Halloween. They celebrate evil. They celebrate darkness. But what can we do about it? Well, we have two choices, I think. We can either shut our ears and forget it all, or we can speak light into that darkness. It's two choices. Now, in the past, I've always tended to go down the first line of turning away and saying, actually, I don't want anything to do with that. That's for the world. It's not for me. But this year, well, the last couple of years, we've done things like a light party in Curacy, where we can show the light, we can talk about Jesus. And this year, Amanda and I have ordered some of these bags of hope from UCB. So this Thursday night, we're not going to close our curtains and turn the lights off and pretend we're not in. We're going to have a pumpkin out on our drive with the cross of Jesus Christ on one side, the ichthus on the other side, and candles in the middle showing the light of the world And when the children come and knock on our door and say, trick or treat, (laughs) we're going to give them a bag of hope. I should have brought one in with me and I forgot. But we're going to give them a bag of hope. Yes, it's got a couple of sweets in. But it's got a storybook in. I think it's called Rescued or Redeemed. I can't remember the name of the story. But it gives them the story of Genesis to Revelation. It gives them the the gospel story in in an accessible format for them. Now, we've ordered 50 of these. If 49 of them are taken and go in the bin, and just one is read, and just one comes to know Jesus, that's a success. I don't mind if all of these bags go in the bin, but if one person reads that, whether it's a child or a parent, that is a success, because that's a win for the kingdom. So this is one way that we can speak light into the darkness. Speak in light into that darkness. When the world is there full celebrating ghosts and ghoulies and devils, we're going to celebrate Jesus Christ and we're going to take a stand. So can I encourage you to take a stand? It might be too late to order bags of hope and I'm not on commission by UCB, but it's up to you how you do it. You either take a stand or we hide. Of course, dare I mention it, the the Christmas word, it's coming. We're approaching Christmas. The shops want you to think Christmas is here already. Where did we lose Christmas? When did Christmas become a secular celebration? When did Christmas become about trees, santas, and reindeers and not about Jesus Christ, who came to earth as a baby, Emmanuel, God with us? It really saddens me that shops are already selling Christmas things. And and Amanda will tell you, I do my best to avoid them. 
I do my, when she goes and has a look, I stand at the side and go, no, I'm not getting involved. And the odd time I do get involved, she tells me off because I'm too vocal that there's no nativity scenes. Because the world has hijacked Christmas. So what can we do about that? Well, we can speak again into that darkness. When we choose our Christmas cards, we can make sure we choose them that actually represent Christmas. That have the baby Jesus on there. That have Mary and Joseph. We don't have the kings, remember, but we have Mary and Joseph. (laughs) Maybe the shepherds. But why, in this day and age, do people go and spend so much money on Christmas, get into so much debt, when they don't know Jesus? What's the point? I don't know why people celebrate Christmas when they don't know Jesus. Because what are they celebrating? It's not rocket science. So can we speak light into the darkness as we approach Advent, which obviously the world forgets. So as we approach Advent and we approach Christmas, we can speak light into that darkness as well. And I'm going to mention another word, which you're probably all sick to death of hearing as well. I'm going to mention the B word. I'm not going to get political, But we know that this week, Brexit could happen. I don't understand it. I'm not trying to understand it. But it has the potential to be one of the biggest changes to our nation in a generation. I know we'll all have different opinions sat here. And that's fine. But it will mark a change in our country. Since the referendum in 2016, there's been a rise in hate crime. And it is possible that if we leave this week, that could happen again. None of us know what's going to happen. God knows what will happen. But it's one area that I know when I've been talking to people recently, there's a lot of darkness. Because it's the unknown. It's the fear of the unknown. There seems to be a sense of, well, I've had enough of it. I just want it sorted, whatever way. People are disillusioned and they don't know what to do. Our nation is divided. There's no word about it, but our nation is divided. If Brexit happens on Thursday, and it's a big if because we don't know, then this church will be open on Friday, and I will be holding prayer meetings for our church, for our community, for our town, and for our country to pray. If you're free and would like to join me, I will be more than happy to welcome you. We'll get some times out during the week. There'll be specific prayer times. Those of you that say my day off Friday, that's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll have a day off on Saturday. But I want this church to be open so that we can pray for God to intervene and bring light into that darkness. As I said last week, who brings order out of chaos? Well, Genesis 1 tells us that it's God that brings order out of chaos. If you can't make it because you're at work or have other commitments, can I encourage you to just pray where you are? Because Jesus Christ is sovereign. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And whatever happens, Jesus Christ will still be Lord of all, whether we're in the EU or we're not. He is the way that we can rebuild the trust in our nation. There may be people who need extra reassurance in the coming days. Those who feel threatened by what might happen. Well, we can bring that reassurance because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So can I encourage you to join? Let's not wait till Friday. The church will be open on Friday to pray, but let's pray this week in our homes, tonight at intercessors, in our homes, in our offices, in our schools, wherever we go, pray and share the light and truth of Jesus Christ. Because it's what people are longing to hear. They may not know it yet, but we know that they need to hear it. People are taken captive by society. They get sucked into what the media says, sucked into striving what is shown on the TV, and not looking beyond the immediate. Well, I love this quote. You can't actually read it very well up there, can you? From C.S. Lewis, who says, The continual looking forward to the eternal world is not a form of escapism or wishful thinking, but one of the things a Christian is meant to do. So when we have decisions to make, let's try and blot out the sound from the world 
Let's tune our ears into what the Lord is saying. Let's take a conscious effort to seek the eternal and not the temporal. To seek the things of the kingdom of heaven and not the things of this world. As we listen to God ourselves, let's start making that louder noise in the public sphere. Because for too long, Christianity has been pushed out and it's time that it comes back. It's time that Christianity comes back. We are a Christian nation. It's time that we get back to being a Christian nation. During the ordination service for priests, there's a line in the ordinal which reads, they are to search for his children in the wilderness of this world's temptations and to guide them through its confusions that they may be saved through Christ forever. Now that's in the ordination service, but that's not just for those that are ordained. That is a call for each and every Christian in this land, in this world, to go out and find those who are lost, bring them in, bring them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you up for it? Are you up for going out there, facing opposition, (coughs) guiding people through the world's temptations, helping them in their confusion, and showing them what truth is? Because we need to be those caring and compassionate people. Because the world has lost a lot of that. We can bring healing to a hurting world through Jesus Christ living in us. Because in our busy, lonely and distracted world, people are more lonely than ever. With the advance of Facebook, Skype, mobile phones, any other forms of communication, we're losing that sense of connection with each other. Now, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic to have Skype. It was fantastic to spend time with Andrew and Nice and the children this morning. And I, you know, Amanda and I were able to spend an hour with them on Tuesday. It is a good thing. But it can't become our only thing. Because we're made in the image of God. And God is a relational God, because he's a trinity. So if we're made in his image, we're made to be relational. So this saddens me that the world has become such a lonely place in this day and age. There's too many broken relationships. There's too many shattered lives. There's too many shattered dreams. Biblical moral standards seem to have been completely disregarded because we live in a world that needs spiritual healing. And that's why, that's why Jesus speaks these words from Isaiah. That's why we need to speak these words to our culture, to our world. Because we can bring hope. We can bring light. We can bring healing. Of course, we can't do any of it on our own because we need the Holy Spirit in us and working through us. So I want to ask you this morning, are you willing to carve out the time to take ourselves away from the noise of the world to listen to the Lord? Are we willing to go with him, go to him with decisions that need to be taken and see how he will guide us? Are we prepared to speak into society and challenge what's been happening? And are we willing to not seek after what we want, what the world wants, what society wants, but to seek after what the Lord wants? If we're ready for this, we'll be able to do as Jesus did and be messengers of the grace and love of God. As I say, we can't do any of this on our own. We need the Holy Spirit's anointing. We need the Holy Spirit in us to speak into the darkness. Because we can bring light to that darkness. And that light is in the shape of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now I want to to pray this morning for the Holy Spirit to anoint each and every one of us to go out and speak these words of life, speak these words of truth into the darkness. And we haven't planned this, but I know Helen has chosen the track which for this. Jesus be the center. And that's what it comes down to. So I'm going to spend a bit of time and just ask you to, if you want to engage with this, just open your hands as a sign of wanting to receive from God. You can stay seated, stand if you like, kneel, do whatever you want to do. But get yourself in a space where you can receive from God I'll say a prayer and then we'll listen to the track and do business with God. Receive that anointing that he has for you to go and speak truth into the darkness, to speak light into the darkness. 
So, Father, we thank you for those words that Jesus said from the prophet Isaiah. We thank you that you say the Spirit has anointed us to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release for the captives, to set people free. So, Holy Spirit, we invite you now to come and minister to us, to move among us, to anoint us for the task ahead. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray.